what I would say for everybody is it's okay to freak out in your apartment, cry, whatever you got to do. It's fine to do that. And then think about how you can realistically just a little bit. I'm not saying like make a giant to-do list, but think about a little thing every day that you can do for your business, career, or financial health. You're listening to The Creative Imposter, episode number 94. Welcome to The Creative Imposter. I'm Andrea Klunder, and this is the first in a series of episodes talking with creatives in our community about how we're dealing with this less than ideal situation we find ourselves in globally at the moment. Today, I'm sharing with you my conversation with Sammy Gardner, career specialist, digital nomad, and vampire fiction writer. Unfortunately, we didn't get to talk much about vampires, but I will link to her fiction as well as her business resources, which we did get to talk a lot about, in the show notes for this episode, which you can find in the episode description of your app and at thecreativeimposter.com. When I look at Sammy's social media, I dream of the lifestyle she's crafted for herself, traveling around the world to exotic locations, working remotely. So when all this pandemic went down, I knew her lifestyle would be impacted, but I never imagined that her business would suffer as well. Though Sammy works virtually in terms of consulting and coaching, her business is built off of personal relationships that often start in a face-to-face setting through events, conferences, co-working spaces. And as I'm sure you're learning right now, while Zoom and Skype and technological connection over distances is valuable and practical and efficient, there just is no replacement for that in-person human interaction. So what's a digital nomad self-employed creative entrepreneur to do? You're going to find out and get a healthy dose of good practical advice and even a few laughs for yourself as well. One thing I want to say about this and the next few episodes is that while I'm trying to record and then publish these episodes as quickly as my team and I can get them ready, things are changing so quickly that what is reality today can be much different tomorrow. So For example, Sammy and I talk a bit about predictions around economic relief and stimulus packages, and this conversation was recorded just a few days before the U.S. package was announced. So just keep that in mind that everything is in flux and changing moment to moment. Also, I want to extend a couple of invitations to you. If you are feeling isolated, overwhelmed, and missing some human connection, I am currently hosting twice weekly complimentary online co-working meetups via everybody's favorite platform, Zoom. They last about 40 minutes on Tuesdays and Fridays, and they are simply a way for us to see and hear each other, to check in, to set one clear intention for the day, and feel like we're actually part of a collective and not just on our own. It's free, and you can get the link and details in the Creative Imposter Facebook group linked in the show notes at thecreativeimposter.com forward slash FB. Also, episode 100 of The Creative Imposter is coming up, and I want to celebrate with you. I have space for a few more voices to include in the episode. Could that be yours? All you have to do is check out my list of all of our previous interview titles at thecreativeimposter.com forward slash title list and choose a phrase that resonates with you. It could be the actual episode that you listened to that really spoke to you or even just the phrase. Once you've chosen an episode title, record a short voice memo, maybe two or three minutes. Or if you're not into recording, you can just send me an email and I'll read it for you. And let me know what it is about that episode or that episode title that resonates with you, what it means, and how it has impacted your creative life and work. All right, let's find out what's happening in the world of remote work, creative freelancing, and digital nomads who find themselves grounded for the time being with Sammy Gardner. 
So I am super happy to be here. And what I do for work is that I am a career specialist. So you can kind of imagine the job counselor that you had in high school or your course advisor in college. I do that, but on a bigger scale for professionals. I primarily work in tech and I've worked online for the last three years as a digital nomad, but now I am recently a digital homebody. <laughs> so tell us, what do you mean by digital nomad? Yeah, like that's just like a cutesy, like semi-marketing term, really, for just someone who worked remotely and then also used that location independence to travel and live in other countries. So I've lived and traveled in like Brazil, Portugal, Bulgaria, you know, Italy, different places like that, and I'll stay for like a couple of months until, you know, I have to leave because of visa reasons and stuff like that. And it was great because I got to travel the world and meet clients and have opportunities that I wouldn't normally have if I had stayed in my home city of Tucson. So that's the long and short of it. Where were you in the world when all of this crazy pandemic stuff went down. I was in Brazil. I went to Brazil for carnival and I was like, Getting back into productivity mode because in Brazil, when it's carnival, like you're not doing anything. You literally can't work even if you wanted to. So I was in Brazil. I've self-isolated, self-quarantined myself since I traveled internationally, but I've been here for a week now. And it was nuts trying to get that last flight out of Brazil because a day or two after I flew out, American Airlines stopped doing any travel. So I got out at the right time. So you're safe at home in Tucson? Is that where you are right now? Yes, I am. I got, as you hear, dog, I got a stockpile. I'm good to go. It's just kind of weird for me in a lot of ways, because this is radically going to change how I do business. Like I said before, a lot of my client generation was due to the fact that I would travel and I would do like a speaking engagement at a local co-working space. I would build up my client base that way. You know, yes, I did everything virtually. I did everything online, but that human to human interaction that did a lot for me. So that's been one of the things in my quarantine time that I've been trying to parcel out is exactly how to pivot now that like, who knows what's going on these wacky times. (laughs) That's actually a good point, Sammy, because when I was thinking about who I wanted to bring on the show and I was thinking about you, I thought, oh, your business probably isn't that affected because I think of all the work that you do online. I think of all the work that you do coaching people on LinkedIn. And it did not occur to me that you do a lot of your like lead generation and making new relationships through in-person speaking events. Yeah, and those have all been all my summer speaking because here's here's a little travel tip no one's going to need for a while, but a travel tip (laughs) uh, is travel with other people's money if you can. Doing this travel for business, for speaking engagements and stuff like that, I had a pretty consistent routine pretty much because I would be in Arizona for the holidays. I would go on in the spring to Europe. I would speak and teach and do different things in like Lisbon and Berlin and I'd wind it back you know towards the states or to South America where I have connections and I would do a little bit of a migration if you will and that helped one just kind of get my face out there you know do speaking work on content be able to work with a crowd meet new people at conferences and that was super helpful and of course then i would use social media to keep in contact with these people until you know i came back to town again on my tour my my wacky career in linkedin tour which you know you got to see that when i come to town but yeah so that's that's what i would do I've had to do some pivots naturally, like there's some things that I can do in person, but you know, one of my, my big projects that I was going to do this summer was I was working with the Nomad Fest, which is this big festival in Bulgaria for people who are location independent, remote workers, digital nomad types. And me and a business partner, we were going to be, you know, affiliated with them, but we're going to run like a women's sort of retreat during that same time period because 
being a digital nomad, most people think of like a bro on a beach with a laptop. And we were kind of like building the sorority, if you will. And that was something that I invested in. We had like two chalets, obviously, you know, we're going to do that in July. And like, even the Olympics has postponed that. So not only like my usual speaking engagements, this retreat thing I was doing, uh, postponed, hopefully, you know, is so far out that you could have predicted in like January, like, we're going to be fine. Now it's like, well, do I know how to bake my own bread and churn my own butter? Like those are the <laughs> questions that we're asking ourselves coming into April. But yeah, I know that that was like a long winded reply, but I'm still like, ah, 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 butterscotch. <laughs> I have seen a lot of people baking bread online. I don't know what that's about. But <laughs> Comfort? Just the smell <laughs> I of it? So. Like, I, I don't know. Like, it's, it's really weird, all the reactions that people have. I completely get it. We're all, like, nesting in different ways. Like, I've done, you know, the physical, like, get my stuff sorted. But the nesting that I've been doing recently is all the stuff for like my business. Cause I do see the recession coming ahead. You can't lose that many people, you know, after so many years of having more of a bull market, not to expect that, well, time to shore up all your reserves. Like approximately what percentage of your income or your revenue typically comes from these live events versus your online income through coaching and classes and stuff? Yeah, it's hard to quantify because a lot of times I can meet somebody maybe like, okay, so I did this conference in Columbia like two years ago. I still have had people come out of the blue being like, oh, I saw you do that thing or I met you there in Columbia. I need help with this CV. So it's something where I can't always put a dollar amount on it, but it was something that I could, you know, rely on to know that in the future it plant seeds. And it was also easy content creation. Like when you're traveling and you have to like put something up, like me at an airport, me at, you know, a coffee space, me doing all the things we can't do for a while, like, you know, in these different fabulous locations. I'm trying to not so much be wistful of like, okay, we can't do whatever. But just kind of be mindful of, okay, I'm not going to have those sort of resources in the foreseeable future to be able to get that content, to do that client generation. So what I've switched is actually to, and I've done this before, I've had a long-term stable contract with a online tech bootcamp for years, but just exploring longer term, bigger consulting contracts with industries where, yeah, they're going to weather this to kind of be a bit of a, a bandaid, I guess, or at least be something to do since all my speaking and all my European adventures are kind of out the wayside. I'm going to be teaching an online course at a local university here in Arizona. So at least, you know, I'll have that. But I also want to make sure that I can, you know, have time and energy for whatever sort of like mix ups or whatever sort of situations, emergencies and everything like that. So I'm trying to scale back my reliance on this one on one work, which I do love it and trying to find these bigger, more stable contracts just as we get to the uncertainty of the spring and the summer. For your clients and colleagues, other digital nomads and online entrepreneurs or other people that you've worked with on career coaching over the last couple of weeks, what have you noticed? Yeah, that's a good question. Now, I've seen it like as like a domino effect, you know, where it started with my my friends in the travel industry, you know, they were most affected, then the events people, and it's just kind of overtaking these different industries. With all of my clients, I wanted to get ahead of it as well. I made sure to email everybody. I sent like little resource guys for working from home and things like that. Not that I expected them to get back to me necessarily, because what I've noticed with even my friends who have been laid off and I'm like, hey, you know, if you, you need something, let me know. Everyone's taking a while to get back to people because they're just dealing with 
you know, all the chaos of it. So I do encourage business owners to reach out to your folks. Don't expect to always hear from them. Even when you're creating content, don't expect to have the same levels of engagement. One of my, I guess, side hustles, projects or whatever is that um, I write fiction. So, you know, not just resumes, (laughs) I have layers. Um, But yeah, and I've noticed that even though we're in like a, a global staycation that I haven't had the same amount of reads and stuff like that. I recently did a book launch. People have gotten back to me. It's just like, you know, I grabbed the book, but it's really hard for me to focus. So you're going to find with most people and even, you know, business owners with their own tasks is that people are like, kind of slow to react. They're in like, okay, what is the most necessary thing that I can be doing now? But if you're somebody who's trying to get ahead of it as a business owner or as a career person, like reach out to your people, reach out to your network. I mean, I don't think it's a bad idea for anybody on their quarantine chore list to put update LinkedIn, look over resume and stuff like that. Because even in the best of markets, every job is temporary in America, you know, and now we have a very spooked market. So look over what you can do if you have the mental strength for it. If you got if you got enough in the gas tank to just kind of look over your own personal brand, your own materials, your resume and everything like that, just in case you might need to send it out. Or if you're a business owner, look at all your expenses and how you're operating. Try to do stuff that is going to like be easier for you. Like there's probably some people who are still doing launches and stuff like that. And it's not a bad idea, but I feel like it's definitely for a while, it's better to be visible and there for your people as opposed to running headlong into to big projects. I saw that you had a post online, I think it was on Facebook, that you had sort of like a list and a video of what I'm doing to pandemic proof my business, aside from like brushing up your social media profiles and your resume, perhaps, and making sure that you are reaching out to your clients and and being available as a resource. What are some of your pro tips for pandemic proofing your business either like long-term in the future versus like what are immediate things that you need to do? Good question. Some immediate things to do is to look over whatever you have automatically posting for social media. It might have seemed evergreen two months ago, but it might not strike the right tone now. So that's one thing that you can do to make sure that you don't have to like worry about any faux pas. Another thing that you can do right now is be gentle with yourself. If you were in the middle of a launch or if you were like me and you were doing a a travel related thing and now that's out the window, it's okay to come clean to your audience and be like, hey, that's not going to work out for X, Y, and Z reasons. Another thing is not to get defensive, especially publicly. I've seen with a lot of the the online sort of influencer space and everything like that, a lot of going back and forth on how people are marketing, how you should present yourself, et cetera, et cetera. Especially for the folks who are kind of in the lifestyle sort of industry. They're supposed to be peppy and blah, blah, blah. And they're not always sure if they're striking the right tone. It's okay to modify things. It doesn't need to always be business as usual. In fact, I would recommend to people, if you're really worried about how to show up, how to sell, how to market, right now, just be giving. If you have some easy offerings, like one thing I did was make a bunch of resume templates from my career course. I made it just free and I was just like, here you go, bon appetit, here's some good resumes. I don't want you all have to worry about having a good looking resume right now. If you're already in the online space, you've probably already created some sort of info product. There you go. Be a giver. Do some live streams where you spotlight some charities or something like that. That can be a way where you can feel good, but still show up in people's feeds. And the thing is, is that you are in a lot of ways being business as normal, but you're addressing what actually is going on with your audience right now and they'll appreciate it. So those are some immediate things that you can do because a lot of times you're going to find that whatever you're selling, unless it's toilet paper, you might have a bit of 
uneven sales. I've been seeing it in my fiction books. I have been seeing it with my online courses. The resume writing has, offers have gone up, but if you have a couple of hustles, you know, a couple of different things you're doing, expect maybe one of them to have a downturn and just be able to modify your expectations and make sure that at the very least for all of them, you're showing up even if you might not have anything to, to sell. If your thing was that retreat or that conference or that event and that's not here anymore, you're going to have to move on. Don't get defensive. Keep it, keep it positive. Keep the tone good. For long term, this is going to be something where you're going to want to look over your own business practices, how you do lead gen. A lot of people are talking cost cutting. I would think about things that are costing you energy. So do you have some processes that aren't automated? Do you have some sort of things in your schedule where you're forcing everybody on your team to do a meeting that they don't need to? Is there some part of your system that requires a person or a requirement for some sign off thing? Like I have friends who work at the university where a lot of them, they have everything nearly automated or online, except for one part of that process where somebody has to walk their happy butt into a bursar's office and hand a check. Find those sort of things in your business that can be future stop gaps. Try to focus on these processes for the next couple of months and try to streamline them. Like whatever happens with the coronavirus crisis, at the very least, it can wake us up to these sort of inefficiencies, these poor things of communication, and it can give you a chance to kind of give your entire business a stress test and see what works. Another thing to think about is in this time, and you can do it right now to brainstorm what projects, what future things, what extra streams of income that you can add to your business, your freelance, whatever you're doing. A lot of times there are businesses who can be very profitable You can, or you can be a very successful freelancer, but there are opportunities where you're leaving money on the table. Yes, cost cutting is good, but you can also see where could you be putting some affiliate links on your website? Is there something where you can add a, a video course or something like that to whatever thing you're doing? Like think about information products, passive products, and how those can be applied to your business. And then lastly, of course, what you can do over the long term is really reconnect to what you want for your career or your business because there's going to be a lot of shifts. And to quote Littlefinger from Game of Thrones, chaos is a ladder. It's not always a pretty ladder. It doesn't mean that you're not going to find that a lot of things that you hoped for might not have happened the way you wanted them to, but you can still find opportunities. They might not be what you had wanted. Maybe they're not what anybody had wanted, but whatever outcome we have, we can still try to figure out what we can do for ourselves to kind of feather our nest. I know we're all nesting, but to kind of feather it a little bit more and to set up some quality income streams in different areas, even if it's just a little bit. It takes a while for some of these side hustles to pan out, but I think it's pretty clear. What has it been like a month of like this virus? going viral in a lot of ways in the West, and it's already caused layoffs in, in the millions, not just here, but abroad. You know, it's definitely shown for a lot of people that you can't just be holding on to one branch. You know, you got to keep your hand on something else because you never know if something's going to give way. So it's not like the most cheerful thing. Like also in the immediate future, have a nice bubble bath <laughs> and add that to my gloom and doom to-do list. Well, I'm glad you said bubble bath because... I was thinking, you know, there's this whole thing of like, here are all of the productive things that you can do. And now you have all this time and you can write a novel and you can organize your house and you can go over your resume and you can do this. And there's part of me that's like, and what if you feel like doing none of that? I'm curious for you, like personally, you know, the disappointment of having to cancel something that was going to be really amazing that you were looking forward to, the uncertainty of having to shift your strategy and make these pivots and sort of like quick changes. How is that affecting you personally? And what are you doing to support yourself? This might be something you might need to, to edit out. 
But like I was scared shitless when I realized because I thought like no China's gonna contain this. They're gonna they're gonna do a thing. They're gonna have what it's gonna be contained. I saw the delay. I'm like no, they're gonna contain this. They're they're Italians. They know things. And then I was like oh never mind. And it was something where especially coming back because I'm you know for until we figure out more like. I'm at my parents' house. So I moved into my old room. These are my old books. And it's one of those things where there is a sense of identity loss since, you know, how I lived was like in Airbnbs and co-living spaces and short-term rentals. And I was like, that bitch on Instagram. So that has been difficult. I've definitely like, had a bit of like where you stare out the window like listlessly like having like a Ken Burns documentary be like dearest Abigail it's been day six of my quarantine you know um having those moments and it's something where I struggle with the unpredictability of it because I like being able to plan these things so to compensate for my my lack of control over this situation and everything being flipped upside down, I bought a box of wine and I started playing World of Warcraft again. So I know that maybe I should have had a better response than that, but I was like, okay, when I'm actually done working, I'm going to turn this brain off. Like you can't see it in the podcast, dear listener, but I just turn this shit off like turn this brain off i turn off the news during business hours i'm prepping i'm freaking out and then i'm just like nope it's brain candy time okay is it five o'clock okay this is done tv's on i'm playing a video game where i have a lot of sense of control over my my avatar and my characters and i'm just trying to chill out a good thing is, is that I am staying with my family. My mom's ridiculously excited about having her kids in the house. She got us matching quarantine socks. She bought a big <laughs> puzzle. She's really happy about the family time that we're going to have. I'm trying to like enjoy the togetherness. Also mix it with just being like, you know what? I'm not going to be doing as much. And that's really difficult for me because I like to do it all. Part of what I was saying about finding the things that require lesser energy, that's difficult for me, but I need to do that because I can only imagine as things progress, as time goes on, you know, I'm going to want to to have a little bit more wiggle room in my schedule. Because for a lot of us where we work from home or we're semi-remote, we have this idea because we're seeing all these memes from our friends who are new to this about, <laughs> oh, all this time, I don't have a two hour commute. I didn't have one. So I didn't gain two hours of my day like my dad did, who's all excited. I still have the same number of hours, but I'm watching everybody be like, I'm going to lose weight. I'm going to do this. And I'm like, well, I don't want to break it to you, buddy, but working from home isn't a personality transplant. You will you will be the <laughs> same kind of person you ever were. You just got two extra hours of your day. I regained those and I managed to just watch a little bit more TV. So I do commend anybody who wants to write a book during this time. I want to, but that's just because I like writing. And I also write vampire novels, so I'm not writing War and Peace here. But yeah, you might might not. So be okay with chilling out a little bit. If you were to <laughs> become a fortune teller and predict the future, what would be your prediction of like something that you think will be a long lasting impact on the way people work or on the way people approach their careers and their businesses moving forward? Yeah, what I would think for anybody who owns a business now, they've already had to come to terms with the fact that they need to have a remote plan. All those folks who are gonna be missing the office after this, they're either going to be extroverts or they're gonna be working for a company that doesn't get their act together and create standard operating procedures that can promote remote work. Because it can be great to work remotely, if you are a company that knows how to communicate, collaborate, and you also built in some pro-social activity type things 
for your workers because you are going to have people who are extroverts who want to have that extra sort of synergy and being able to like audio process to each other you know i would project that all the companies that were already kind of on board with working remote they're gonna accelerate that process the thing is for the companies that were struggling with it before who are resisting it maybe there might be a couple who will come out with the mind change but most of them are going to have problems and it's going to like reaffirm to them oh this is difficult this can only be done with some employees and that's how it's going to be for them I would say for your average worker, what they're going to notice about this great remote experiment is that when companies rehire, there's going to be some positions that they're not going to rehire again. So companies are going to realize, oh, we can split this among a bunch of other people or, oh, we're going to put in a computer thing that will make it happen. Like I would predict one thing that's going to kind of blow up is more voice interface design. So that is when you're talking to Siri, if we're not allowed to touch surfaces as much anymore, we're going to be, you know, yelling at them. So you're going to see a little bit more of that. But when that happens, you know, what is that going to mean for the people who are doing that job? Of course, we have learned that the delivery drivers, clerks, bank tellers, we've learned that there's a lot of jobs that a computer can't do. So I hope that is a very good message to a lot of the CEOs and business owners in America, from the farm workers all the way up to, you know, the doctors. There are certain professions in this country that can never be remote in the way that some people think. And I really hope that this creates a lasting impression. Because one of the things I think will be an issue is that when you look at a lot of these government stimulus bills, and you'll see it around the world from Australia to the UK, France, um, Italy, you know, wherever, those sort of benefits are not going to go to, in a lot of ways, the self-employed. A lot of us are not covered under a payroll or anything like that. We're not going to get those benefits. So I hope that that means that a lot of us are going to look into ways to organize, whether it's with a freelancers union or, you know, a, a local or national union of some kind, because the gig economy, being a consultant, however you, you spin it, you know, as a contract worker, we are becoming more and more of the working population. But, you know, if we have something like this, a disaster, a pandemic, act of God, what, what are we going to do? And more and more companies are relying on us. But, I mean, look at the Uber drivers. They're taking a lot of risks. Are they going to get a bailout? Probably not. Uber might. So hopefully we all kind of, when the dust settles, we look around and we realize, hey, you know, it turns out we do all need to, as workers, be in on this together as freelancers. I know we're all independent hustlers baby but we could be interdependent hustlers baby <laughs> <laughs> interdependent hustlers sammy thank you so much for all of that advice and sort of looking ahead into the future and into the present moment is there anything else that you can think of that you would want to share with the creative imposter listeners or anything else that's on your mind that you feel we should hear yeah what I would say for everybody is it's okay to freak out in your apartment, cry, whatever you got to do. It's fine to do that. And then think about how you can realistically just a little bit, I'm not saying like make a giant to-do list, but think about a little thing every day that you can do for your business career or financial health, whether that is right now, there's a lot of like, banks and credit institutions that are giving people deferments or no interest. If you're a business owner and you're really worried about, you know, your credit and what you're doing and your income stream, call up your bank, call up your credit card, call up your credit union, 
ask them what they can do for people affected by the COVID. Because even if you have not tested positive, you have been affected by this. You might as well take advantage of the opportunities they have right now. Another little thing that you can do is just a small thing that you can do for yourself is make a list of what activities you're doing now for your business that you can take off your plate. Just remove it. You know, if it's something where you have like You've been maintaining a Twitter and you don't get any clients from Twitter. Either learn how to automate that, have a Zapier, send something from your Facebook to Twitter, or just cut that completely. Yes, you want to cut costs, but most of all right now, I would focus on how much energy you need to spend for different things. We all have a finite well of energy and I feel like just the stress and the tension and the push notifications like (laughs) geez holy crap like is Stephen King like being like here's all your worst fears that could (laughs) happen and sending me notifications so in that time get shit off your plate you don't have to do it all so that's my advice Freak out if you need to, and then be very strategic afterwards about your efforts, your energy, and see what programs or services that you can tap into now while people are saying yes and people are offering, just so you can give yourself a little bit more breathing room as we come into the summer. Those are my final words. Whether you're freelancing or learning how to work remotely for your company, I hope Sammy's insights gave you some ideas for both how to find your feet beneath you in the present and how to look ahead for the future of your creative career. You can find links to Sammy, including her dreamy travel photos from before, in the show notes for this episode in your app description and at thecreativeimposter.com. Remember to reach out to me with a short story prompted by a previous episode title to help me celebrate episode 100 of The Creative Imposter. The list of title prompts is available at thecreativeimposter.com forward slash title list. And hey, If you are someone who has found extra time on your hands and you've ever been thinking about starting your own podcast, or maybe you're working for a brand that is wondering if podcasting might be a creative, clever way to connect with your community while everything is shifted to online space and non-traditional outreach, let's talk. I've opened a limited number of complimentary consultations in my schedule for you. Book a time that works for your virtual podcasting tea date with me at thecreativeimposter.com forward slash T420. That's T T E A 4 F O R 20 2 0. This episode was mixed by Edwin Ruiz at Mondo Machine, and our theme music is by Jovia Armstrong. I thank you so much for listening, and this week I'm grateful that you're safe and wishing you continued health and ease. 